In the last video, we have talked about rate limiting and throttling, where we saw how to protect your services from getting overloaded by too much traffic. Now let's move to another critical area of distributed systems, which is data consistency across microservices. Let me explain the problem first. Let's say a user places an order. Now that one request need to first deduct the stock from inventory service, then create a payment entry in the payment service, and in the end create an order record in the order service. Now all of these three steps needs to succeed for an order to be a valid order. But what if a payment goes through and the inventory update fails or inventory is updated but order creation fails. So these kind of failures are very common in microservices because everything is distributed that is running on different machines with network in between. So how do we make sure that either all the changes go through or none of them do? So in monolithic applications, we use to rely on ACID transactions and relational databases to ensure the atomicity. All operations either completed together or are rolled back together. But in microservices, where each service has its own database, there is no shared transaction boundary. So how do we ensure that all or nothing behavior across multiple independent services? That's where distributed transactions comes in. The most basic approach to handle distributed transactions is called a two-phase commit or also known as 2PC. So today we will start with two-phase commit. So what exactly is this two-phase commit? Two-phase commit is a protocol used to make sure a transaction involving multiple systems either fully commits or fully rolled back. It uses a central coordinator and follows two distinct steps. First is prepare phase and second one is commit phase. Due to these two phases, this is known as two-phase commit. Now let's understand both of these phases in detail. In our system, we will have multiple worker services and one controller service also known as coordinator. The coordinator sends a message to all the participating services and will ask, can you commit this transaction? Then each service tries to perform the operation locally but doesn't actually commit yet. Then it says, yes, I'm ready or no, I cannot commit the transaction. Now, if all the services respond with yes, then we move to phase two. Now, if any of the services has said no in the prepare phase, then the coordinator will send a rollback signal and every service discard their local changes. Now, the coordinator service send the final command, go ahead and commit. At this point, each service commit the transaction. So in this way, either everything is committed or nothing is. That's the idea behind atomicity in distributed systems. This sounds perfect. With this, we have achieved an atomic transaction in a distributed system. But wait, if this is so perfect, then why don't we use it everywhere? It is because two-phase commit comes with serious limitations for distributed systems like microservices. Now let us briefly discuss those issues as well. The biggest issue is blocking. So once a service replies yes in the prepare phase, it must lock some resources and wait for the final commit or rollback command from the coordinator. Now if the coordinator crashes in the middle of the process, the services are left hanging, not knowing whether to commit or rollback. And during this time, they lock their local resources, which can cause huge delays or even deadlocks in high traffic systems. Another issue is single point of failure. The coordinator becomes a single point of failure in this system. If it crashes in between prepare and commit phase, all the other services are left hanging not knowing what to do next. Two-phase commit also requires synchronous coordination between services and coordinator, which means there is a tight coupling between services and extra network latency due to this. Two-phase commit is also not designed for failure-prone environments. A single network glitch or a timeout or a crash can block the entire transaction. So these are the main reasons why two-phase commit is rarely used in microservices today. But it is important to know this pattern because many relational databases still support it and it is the foundation of understanding better patterns like Saga and Outbox. So is it like no one uses two-phase commit or a better question would be when does two-phase commit still make sense? Two-phase commit can be used in systems where monolithic architecture is there but distributed databases are present. 
Also, in a strongly consistent system that don't care about latency, we can use two-phase commit. But mainly for the cloud-native scalable microservices, we need something better. Now, because of these limitations, the industry moved towards more resilient pattern. The first attempt there was to fix the issues which are present in two-phase commit with a three-phase commit. And after that, we accepted the reality that perfect consistency is hard in distributed system and started using eventual consistency models. And finally, we built practical solutions like Saga design pattern and Outbox pattern. And we'll go through all of these one by one in the upcoming videos. Starting next, we will look into three phase commit, how it improves over two phase commit and why it is still not good enough for the microservices. So make sure you like, share and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when the video is uploaded see you in the next one till then let's keep learning mm -hmm.